and here's my update. I've uh, stripped off all those upper boards. What I've really decided is basically I'm gonna slope all these. I'm gonna, so if it's down about an inch and a half to two inches on the end, I'm also gonna cut that blocking inch and a half to two inches. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll rip all these and then make marking on the blocking and then either put the blocking back in or keep it out. And then I'm also gonna drop this um, an inch or so. So between, between those two cuts, you know, that should give me three inches, you know, two and a half to three inches of slope over the course of this. And that's, that's gonna be enough. It'd be nice to have more, but as you can see, this beam is set directly on these columns. These columns are not going anywhere. So um, that's probably gonna make the most sense is to do it like that. But um, I think this also makes sense because as you can see, look at these rich, beautiful chocolatey boards compared to the old ones. You know, they were, they needed some love anyway. And of course, I obviously didn't have to take these down to paint them. But now I can really get all underneath. You know, you can see the white stripes are where apparently this cover used to be white. And they paint around it. But all this will get painted. The ends of the boards will get painted up really well. So like you can see, here's the setup. They're just going to get really stuffed full. And that's going to substantially prolong all this nice lumber. And... uh the paint I'm using is a Sherwin. I'm using Emerald, which is their expensive outdoor brand or outdoor line. It's really nice and it's definitely brown, but this is a color called Black Bean. Let me show you how the front one turned out. So here's that front cover. I put everything back up so it's we're pretty dialed in here. But as you can see, you know, just the fresh paint makes a world of difference. These are all ripped down a little, ripped. That one's dropped down. I didn't put the blocking back in this one, and I actually kind of like how it makes a little more airy looking up there, but this is obviously going to get the sloped um, polycarbonate roofing, so check that out. Turn out pretty nice. This took a couple days to do, like a whole day of painting and a whole day of you know on installing those boards the screws kind of square drive the square drives are rounded out and having to chisel some of them off of there so kind of a mess but definitely turned out really good so that's what i'm gonna do in the back well in typical form this job kind of blew up on me these boards you'll notice look really good but when i realized i was going to do the sloping uh, and I started taking more stuff apart that included the big header that went across these these pillars or columns So as soon as I was gonna take that off and cut it down rip it down check out what I found out I'm gonna go up the ladder here so these are, As far as I could tell were Roman columns and you could tell that they were halves, but I thought that was more of like a you know, when they made the concrete form half, but they're really just a shell for looks. The actual structure was a, was a four by four and the four by four, as you can see, is gone. Then it goes to that bracket down there. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Got my really good light. So eh, it's really tough to tell on this one. But there is a bracket that's set in concrete right there with all these little flaky wood chunks around it. And you notice that hole is the uh, basically like the, the rock. So that 4x4 is totally shot. Let me show you what it looks like. And yeah, luckily after painted these yesterday and then it started raining so all that paint's good but let me show you the rotted 4x4 four four. just hammered totally junk so it was a 4x4 four four with a couple 2x4s slapped onto it um, 
just wasted. It looks like this thing was practically sitting in water in there. So with all those totally shot, I had to make a new plan. I did, there's all the pieces that, you know, ripping those 12 foot four by, I think they're eights, was uh, a little rough. I had to go get a different saw. And um, yeah, it's been a mess. That, that header ended up being, that's what this board is. It's just, actually, sorry, it's that one. So this stuff is just hammered. So I borrowed the big boy, and then it started raining, so I threw it in the garage real quick. So those headers were rotted, so um, I had a friend with some 4x8s, and I wanted to rip an inch and a half off the 4x8 to slope additionally, so luckily he had a couple 12-footers, so I cut these down about 130 inches, and then ripped one inch with the big saw. And I was so ready to put them back together, but I obviously can't. So this is what I learned about these. It's kind of like a concrete base, and then this shell is hollow, and then this is a little bit more of a structure. So there are several pieces, and my plan with it right now is I'm going to do like a few ratchet straps on this, maybe three ratchet straps, and then I'm going to take rebar and bend it at the bottom, you know, try to get like a 90 out of the rebar and get the rebar all the way down into that hole where you could tell there's a footing where there's basically a piece of metal like that one. That one's new. There's basically a piece of metal like that one that was set in concrete and it's still, there's still some, some room there. I'm going to actually shove the rebar down under the rock. Um, probably like, you know, two or four rebars per column and then fill this thing totally solid with uh, concrete. So obviously my project is delayed. What I've done temporarily is I've left these boards up here to hold the grapevine good. And you can imagine it's gonna be a fair amount of material. Um, let's take a look in this one. This one might be able to see a little bit better. But this is gonna be eight feet just over eight feet totally full down there you'll see this one's gonna be the same as that other one was tough to get it to focus but this is gonna rebar rebar all into there concrete it all the way to the top and then i'm actually gonna um, set that metal bracket in the concrete probably put a bolt in it anyway just so it's really hooked in the concrete good and then bring the concrete up to this level and then maybe even slope it up a little so so if any water sits on there again it does have more of a tendency to run off but this was a bad design the water would sit here it would creep in and for all i could tell this thing was at some points probably partially full of water especially we had a really wild winter so i got that bracket it's, I guess I shouldn't say it's new, it's used. It's going to be new to this project, though. So that bracket will sit. Those two arms will sit in there with a bolt through it. That'll all be embedded in the concrete. And then the concrete will come right up to the bottom. And then the, the now what's a 2 by it's a 4 by 6 bit. It's like, I think it's actually 7. It's a 4 by 7 I cut it to. So this dimension is a 4 by. So that'll go through there. I got those from a friend. I need one more for this one that's going to be like a little wider so I could tie in two of the 4x7s right there. So probably going to push this job out another week, but it'll be sweet when it's done. And then for now, I'll come through and I'm going to clean all this stuff up, paint from here up the white stucco paint that I have, paint the brown, get it nice, paint down the stucco paint. And then all those boards are pre-painted, so I'll be able to start loading them right up there. And so that's where I'm at for right now. I may just uh, go over and take one more look at the uh, these big 4x8s that are ripped over there in the shop. forgot to show you those. Well, I could show you this. This is where... Th these are the cutting pieces of what I took off to give them the slope. So you see they start big. And they go all the way tapered to nothing. So that's all the junk from cutting them off. And then the blocking, I think I'm just going to eliminate. 
Um, the blocking did kind of look cool. If I wanted, I would cut an inch and a half off the blocking, beat the nails out, and I could reuse it. They were they were actually more solid than the than uh, pr pretty much everything else. But probably just gonna eliminate them. I like the open air look, like this one right here. So that used to be blocking up there, and now it just looks. I, I just feel like it looks cooler without the blocking in there. And in the interest of saving money, probably what I'll do is rather than buy concrete bags, you can see I have the mixer right there, which needs to be fixed before I can run it, but I'll fix it. I may get sand and gravel dropped like in bulk, like maybe a few yards of each, and then buy the Portland cement and then mix it up in a ratio in that mixer and make my own concrete rather than the quickcrete. So that'll be a, a savings um, right there. Let's go check out these boards. Well, here's how these are turning out. All ripped and painted. Looking good. Between those and these, everything will be pre-painted. And then uh, I'm on hold until the concrete work happens. And then it's gotta dry. Where we left off. Just fill these, fill in. Let's go see. It's like this one's essentially done. So this, it's obviously full. It's got rebar, I'll explain. This is hooked to a piece of rebar and all set in there and then just left a little high off the concrete so that the concrete's wet, the wood won't be. Um, so what I did was took, took the, I just put the last couple pieces of rebar in there, took the rebar, put a little 90 on them, hung it down there and hooked it to the bracket that was left over set in the concrete, brought it up to the top, cut it. But then the other one, I looped over the top, set it back down. So each of them have three bars of, uh, rebar. And then like for this middle bracket, um, two four by eights have to land on here boom and then see this right here did that big rebar loop so this thing will be embedded but the you know through you know like three feet of rebar will extend down in and you know the bracket will be hooked to those and then we're just mixing the concrete up right now manually i'll show you oh and yeah ratchet strap these at three points just in case they tried to pop apart because again they're just like for looks they're not structural terminar that's the last bucket for that middle one and we got our little setup here so we just got the uh mixer set kind of mixing it up here got a little mixer too this stuff i got a big old pile of uh c mix not like some like the letter C dash mix over there. Can't quite tell. Way over there. I got 10 yards of that. That's what it looks like. So this goes in a three to one ratio. You do three parts of this, one part of Portland cement. And so this is $14 a bag right now at Home Depot. <clears throat> so figure five of those 16, uh, $14 bags will make a full yard of concrete, but it doesn't show up on the truck all ready to go. So this is, you know, we're, we're doing one at a time, we're prepping, we're doing one at a time. So this is the mixing setup right here. I'm gonna fill those up and then do some cleanup and we'll see how it looks. And there we are. Lined up with the string, leveled, sloped a little down so the water doesn't settle on the wood anymore. And no wood in the middle, all just rebar and concrete.